Photoshop or Illustrator, both. Now that we have talked about the beginning process of textile design, creating motifs, we can talk about the finishing stage, using software to process your textile design. You can see my last video where I discussed it. Hi, I'm Daria, a textile and surface pattern designer and artist, both traditional and digital. On this channel, I'm talking all things textile, pattern, color and artwork. Patterns are everywhere. So what kind of software should you use for textile design? Which one is better? Let's talk about it. The software you will use will depend on how your motifs were created. If you paint it in watercolor, you will end up in Photoshop. If you've created clean shapes with a limited number of colors that can be easily counted with black or another kind of color in ink, markers, opaque, gouache, these are good candidates for being vectorized in Adobe Illustrator. The two main most widespread options to finish up the motifs into a repeat tile would be Photoshop that produces raster artwork and Illustrator that produces vector artwork. I spoke about it briefly in my previous video, but today we're going to talk everything about it. So what is the difference? Raster is pixelated and cannot be scaled indefinitely without losing some of the quality. It means when you rescale it, you lose some of the quality. But it doesn't mean that Photoshop is bad and that you shouldn't use it. You can always go a couple steps back and, you know, adjust your settings. You can totally work with Photoshop. It's just something that you need to know about. You need to think about your scale. You can paint bigger when you can. Don't paint this size. Of course, it's going to be a problem later on. You can scan at higher settings as well. And don't rescale unnecessarily. Don't scale things back and forth like this. What is the advantage of raster art? If you have a painting or a very textured art, you know, very textured scanned kind of art, Photoshop definitely handles it well. When you are going for this specific handmade look, Photoshop is your friend. While yes, it is possible to add texture in Illustrator, you need to be really careful, otherwise the file becomes too big and too difficult to handle, lags or crashes your entire operational system. Illustrator works best with clean shapes. I'm going to show you some of my raster and vector art. So let's say this is a raster artwork and this is a vector artwork. I'm going to see how that works in editing and maybe I'll add a couple more examples and maybe one more example. So what is better, Photoshop or Illustrator? The question is incorrect. They are equally good, but for different reasons. It's like asking what is better, a boat or a truck? Which one should you study? There are many classes out there that insist on learning Adobe Illustrator. It's important to understand that while yes, Adobe Illustrator is a very efficient software, it's not the only or not the better option. Ideally, you should know them both and I will explain why. If you are working independently as an independent artist, you can do whatever you want, you can choose the style you want, the software that you prefer, but when you are, for example, working for a full-time job, when you are hired by a large company for, you know, they make clothing, for example, and you will be making their patterns for clothing or other retail products with patterns, the company most likely acquires their artwork from multiple sources different studios or freelance artists and of course some of them will be vector, some will be raster, some paint and others draw directly in Procreate maybe or on paper. So all the options are available. And if you're going to be like, oh, I have no idea how to work with this, I only work with vector or I only work with raster, it might be a problem. It's definitely possible to only work in one program and it's possible to find a job, but knowing both will give you such a big advantage. It will put you ahead of the game, but look at it as a path not as something you need to accomplish overnight. It took me about two years to get really confident in both applications, working 40 hours a week as an in-house designer. Now, there is this urban legend among designers that you're either good at Photoshop or Illustrator. While it can be true, especially in the beginning, it's possible to master both. I'm not saying I can construct airplanes in Illustrator, but I know my way, you know, in Illustrator with a textile design. 
design. It's a very powerful program. I don't know all the commands and all the tools, but I know how to color artwork. I know multiple ways to make a repeating pattern and, you know, do some other cool things, mock-ups and stuff and so on and so forth. I can handle repeating patterns in multiple ways in both programs. And that's the ultimate goal. It took me a while to get there. Let's make it very clear. Are Photoshop and Illustrator the only options? Of course not. There is other industry-specific software for textile design, such as Poincaré and Kaleido. It's usually very expensive, thousands of dollars, and it's unreasonable for an independent designer to pay this price. It makes Adobe look affordable, right? Larger companies usually own one or a couple licenses to share among the design team. It is way less frequent than the Adobe Suite. I always, <laughs> I always get confused, like Suite or Suit, right? Adobe Suite. There are also alternatives to Adobe Suite, kind of pricey. I've heard of Affinity Designer. I believe it's a free vector software. I have no experience working with it, so don't trust my word. Please look it up for yourself. I took it seriously from the very beginning because I know that Adobe is the thing, right? Every design company has an Adobe subscription. I have been paying for my personal subscription as well, even though I was working, you know, uh, at uh, I was working at work, I was working in house. I also did my own design stuff at home, so I have always been paying the subscription. I'll, I'll tell you why, because Adobe and Photoshop are very useful, but sometimes you also need to use other Adobe programs, such as Acrobat, right, to handle PDFs, and designers use PDFs all the time. Especially during the pandemic, we were working from home, so everybody was in different places and we had to communicate. You know, we had to share a lot of images, so we had to handle PDFs in Adobe Acrobat and Adobe Bridge as well. Sometimes I also had to use Adobe InDesign very briefly. I didn't, you know, learn a lot, but when I came to the job, I had to learn to use InDesign at my in-house job because I was handling the catalog of purchased artwork and that was traditionally done in design. I have learned some very primitive, very basic stuff, but again, you have to be open. You have to be able to, you know, understand how the Adobe Suite works. So when I started working at the company, you know, I first only knew Photoshop, but I knew nothing, almost nothing about index files, which is also a very specific kind of files and is very widely used in textile design. I had to learn it, you know, they basically trained me on the job. It's such a big deal and it's used to be so hard to find any classes. We spoke about indexed files in college, but only in Poincaré, not in Adobe Photoshop that is more widespread. So the company that I came to work for didn't have Poincaré licenses. They were not using, they were using another, they were using Kaleido, a different kind of software. Then about a year later, they started transitioning me to the kids design, kids bedding and different kids home decor items. Uh, I was kind of forced, you know, to do that. I was very angry at first. And you know, different designers handle this kind of thing differently. Some people really resist and like, no, I don't want to do it. I don't want to learn it. But I honestly try to work through my resistance and I learned Adobe Illustrator. And I'm so grateful they made me do it because now, you know, nobody can take your knowledge away from you. It's right here. I think the more versatile you are, the better, the more jobs you can do. It's definitely not a quick matter. It will take a couple years. Some people learn faster, some people learn slower. I wouldn't say it wasn't easy for me in the beginning. It was hard, I struggled a lot. But you know, if you keep repeating, doing the same things, you will get good eventually. How can you learn the software, right? A good, reasonable question. Take Skillshare classes, watch YouTube videos and other resources, keep practicing and learning, don't think that you are done learning when you graduate from college or when you have taken one class. I'm still learning. I'm still discovering little things all the time. Use project-based learning a lot. And what I mean by that is, you know, if you're working on something, you can learn specific things because many tutorials you watch on YouTube are irrelevant for textile design, for example. 
but when you are working on specifically a repeating tile you will find those little tricks little things little hiccups that will teach you to get better what helped me a lot is learning at home as well i had the job but i wasn't very happy creatively you know i was starting to think what can i do you know to really fulfill this creative potential i started thinking how can i transition from the full-time job to being an independent artist and i started looking into selling on microstock websites i have watched a lot of videos by oxantia a creator here on youtube she has a lot of tutorials she has her own classes and courses she had a recording of, of recordings of webinars where she was doing stuff and i was doing it with her i did it in my free time on weekends it was very hard you know because i was trying to build my business from scratch from the ground up uh, but it actually made me better at my main job as well because learning those things with her I was discovering some new tools and that's the beauty of YouTube tutorials you constantly learn little tricks from different creators I have learned so many things by accident you guys I was looking for something else but then I watched a designer do it on YouTube and I was like wait wait what is she doing what did she just do and I've learned so many tricks that completely changed my life just by accident just by doing it so i encourage you to do some design in your free time as well because otherwise at your job you are just repeating the same actions again and again you are doing the same things there is not always this you know room to learn if you are working with a team of designers like i did i'm super grateful that i had this opportunity ask them questions is definitely the quickest way to learn you can't bug them all the time because they have work to do but if you are struggling even one of my managers said i'd rather sit down with you and spend 10 minutes explaining than i'll see you doing it for two hours you know some people are so stubborn and they will just keep like trying to work things on their own it can be good and it can be bad because sometimes you're stuck and you're just being stubborn just ask if you, you know, find a job where there is some exotic software like Kalido or Poincare you will probably receive training at your job now let's talk about this topic what is better a Mac or a PC or a Windows computer that's another holy grail right of designers so tastes differ that's my answer at my job we used to have pcs first and they were constantly lagging we had issues and we really wanted we had this legend like max are so superior and we asked you know my manager really pushed her managers to get us max and when we got them like she fought so hard for them uh many people started wanting PCs back so really I always mention this how are you with technology it's important some people are comfortable working on iPad some people are not the same with Macs it's a different way of way of thinking it also takes you time to learn but for me I used to be a fan of PCs I was fine I enjoyed working on them but then when we started working on Macs I was like it's fine you know it's okay it works but now I'm actually a Mac fan because you can synchronize you know your iphone your ipad your mac it's very convenient so i would say every uh, system has its own advantages and disadvantages so with apple stuff just works you know it's easy to share files airdrop is so convenient it's easy to use the same photo library i use it all the time for my like reels and photos that i take for instagram uh, there is also this opinion that macs have a better resolution and better monitors for design I personally agree with it I think you know Macs are more professional more you know on point but it's okay to use a PC if you know you don't have to get the fanciest stuff if you can't you can work with what you have and it might also happen like it happened to me I had to learn Mac on the job I would say don't fight it be grateful that you have this opportunity technology is changing so quickly I can't even imagine what will be in 10 years now there are these you know tablets where you draw directly on them who knows maybe it will be the standard in a couple of years i want to mention a little bit about procreate it's fairly new it's um, an apple application for ipad it's not available on android devices as far as i know it makes raster artwork so you can draw clean shapes that you can easily vectorize if you want or you can create 
raster artwork such as you know it looks like watercolor it looks like oil painting there are a lot of brushes it's very popular right now if you are comfortable working on a small screen and on the go it might be your thing it's very popular right now i also want to mention canva a little bit it's a website where you can use templates graphics and videos to create designs there is a certain tension about canva in the design the professional design community you can't really call yourself a designer if all you know is canva i think that's the opinion in the air do you agree let me know but it's great for editing small business matters such as youtube video covers branding elements booklets leaflets who cares but maybe you can't apply for design jobs if you are solely a canva designer i don't know let me know what you think again this question if you say i am at square one which software do i choose to learn to do textile design i would say uh, start with photoshop probably it's easier it's more intuitive then add in illustrator gradually uh, get a taste of both they function very differently if you have an ipad and you don't want to pay for the adobe subscription try procreate right try whatever is available now that's it if you've enjoyed this video if it was helpful please uh, give me your like it really helps the channel you know we want more textile bodies to join us more textile and surface pattern enthusiasts feel free to leave any questions in the comments below don't forget to subscribe and use the little bell icon so you get a little zing when i post a video follow me on instagram it's pattern underscore talent i post reels with painting tutorials I post stories with, you know, behind the scenes and thoughts and whatnot. Check out my Spoonflower shop with fabric and wallpaper. And remember, patterns are everywhere. Um, I've heard of a, a do <laughs> I've heard, I've, so I've heard. <laughs>